チでやろう。嘘ドーナツ。So hello, my dear Jurassic Legends. Welcome to a brand new video that I've been thinking of lately. This is how to get into JWA in 2022, and your friends too. And as you may have guessed by its name, this is going to be quite informative. This bit in particular is one you'll be able to use in order to tell your friends to join your team at last, so that you'll be able to fill those three remaining recruits that you've been unable to get for ages. Or in case you're just getting back into the game after a long time, this bit is also made for you with lots of love. Without further say, let's get right into it. So, what is JWA in general? JWA. Or Jurassic World Alive is a mobile game that might look to you as your average Pokemon Go knockoff, but made by Loidia. <laughs> but it's actually way different, and in some aspects, even better. With Jurassic World Alive, as you may have guessed, you've got dinosaurs, lovely dinos, and prehistoric creatures. Yeah, we got mammoths too. <laughs> And with such creatures, you may think, "Oh, David, I got the best creature in game, T. Freaking Rex." I got the best creature on the whole game. Well then, let me tell you, you don't. This is but the start, and I'll get you into it in a chapter that is indeed coming later on. So sit back and enjoy. Very nice video. Okay, so now let's review creatures and their stats. So basically, creatures in this game are separated into three main categories. There's cunnings, which usually are very fast, and sometimes the strong damage dealers with very low HP. Think of this class being represented by a Velociraptor. Next on the list, we have the Fierce class, which represents normally large carnivorous theropods. I mean, normally, there can be some exceptions. Uh, they usually have decent HP and insane amounts of damage. Uh, I mean, think of this class being represented by a T-Rex. That would be like the nicest comparison I could possibly get. That's how it basically is. But last but not least. There are resilience, which are very high HP creatures, which can be basically defend themselves very well, and are represented mainly by herbivores. Some of them with an armor percentage, which helps them uh, think of this represented by an ankylosaur. That would be a very decent uh, example. So those are the main three. There's obviously mixes between these classes that lead to very nice and good creatures that usually rule their battlegrounds. Those are called wild cards, and they are very, very powerful. So this is how it is: cunnings are superior to fierces by general rule, by distracting, uh, which usually is uh, lowering the damage output they can deliver. So those attacks that fierces uh, like launch in the first place, uh, that were meant to be mighty, uh, are no longer that powerful. Sorry, T-Rex. Sorry. Resilience, however, can usually cleanse distraction on their moves, and some can decelerate those very quick carnivores, and some even heal themselves after getting struck, making them, uh, making, I mean, making those uh, conics slower than a tortoise. I mean, literally, take a look at this tortoise health. And also shield themselves in order to protect themselves against some of their attacks. Those shields, however, can be broken by fierce attack. Well, that's the triangle we got in this game, that's how we gotta play, that's the thing we need to learn. Okay now, PvP Arena, you guessed it, you're gonna be using your creatures in battle against other players. Noobs, great players, and yeah, sadly droppers too. PvP has 13 different arenas. The 13th one, uh, Nublo Shores, is of course the toughest one and you'll usually find the best players with the best creatures on this arena. They usually have like a score that's way beyond uh, the one you'd like get as soon as you enter in the shores. And at the lowest tier you got Fallen Kingdom, players that are 
basically new to the game and are getting used to what the arena is and you also can see some droppers there sadly so what are droppers droppers like by their what their name says are cowards yeah they're, they're cowards cowards which in order to get a lot of incubators without getting their asses handed on purpose use low level creatures so that they'll be beaten easily and in consequence they'll get matched against new players whose dinos are still trying to get better over time a really low class and duty move i mean really it is to say the least in pvp you'll be spending quite some time grinding to get a higher score and gaining daily incubators which grants boosts i mean boosts will help your creature uh, strength so you'll be able to get them like four of each uh, if you get a one daily battle incubator. So this spot requires some sort of common knowledge. As it's up to you to pick the community that suits you whatever you're looking for in a better way. Jurassic World Alive has alliances. These are meant to help players get more DNA, share creatures with your alliance, coordinate stuff. It's very helpful. Uh, and this is one of the most important choices you must face, as I said. As this will also tell how successful you'll, you'll end up being. As if you get back by the right people, a friendly group, a family. You'll be having the greatest time, even when you're not playing, as many communities do have Discord servers, which help on raid coordination, sanctuary sharing, and having fun as well. Why not? This is particularly important as you need to find a good community because there's some very, very disreputable and very nasty communities out there with very unfriendly and rude and authoritarian people uh, that I'd strongly suggest uh, you'd rather ignore unless you're looking to have a bad time willingly with this kind of authoritarian people. Yeah, as I said it. Uh, but I'd strongly suggest you to stay away from those kind of guys and to try and have fun. There's lots of people there that like really put uh, effort and love into this game. So that's the kind of people you want to spend your time with. Definitely. This is the one thing you gotta take into account when you get into a random... Into the Alliance or Discord server you end up getting to. Tournaments. Yet another pvp arena but with different focus and uh, just a single playground the fairgrounds a place where your main goal is gonna be getting 10 kills i mean 10 kills in total like yeah i mean uh, you'll get my point and even more uh, of those kills uh, for your alliance's sake as those points uh, that were received from an alliance championship a tournament are actually contributing to a whole big rewards coming to all of you good folks from the alliance you decided to be a part of. Usually it's a big incubator coming by the beginning of each month and it usually rewards highly valuable unique DNA. But still, uh, this, this one in particular is up to your alliance's members as it's about how much effort your whole team like your team, not as an individual, but as a team. Uh, that's where it depends on the whole effort of your group. That's where the joke is, yeah. And we got raids. If you guys have seen my channel, you pretty much have seen that most of my channel's uh, content is related to raids. If you have no clue of what raids are, uh, basically those are co-oping battles with your friends in order to get lots of great and very valuable DNA. You can get rare, epic, legendary, unique, or even apex DNA, which is kind of the best uh, kind of DNA you'll ever get. Basically, very OP creatures that made lots of Engine players cry and write articles on how apexes should be nerfed, but that's a whole different topic. Uh, Raids just recently got a level cap, which means you need a certain level in order to access some raids as a way to getting rid of low players collecting ultimate creatures DNA. I mean, it's fair and it is, and at the same time, I don't know. Most raids need certain creatures and a specific algorithm of moves that lead to a winning result. 
a simple word it just means that you must follow steps using the attacks you need in the right moment or else things like ending right too soon into a movement to be on cooldown which can be very fatal as that required move could be very important attack or a group heal which is also very important to have in hand raid bosses uh legendary sun up are usually usually accompanied by two little buggers called minions no not those minions this one minions are two small creatures that usually accompany the boss as i said and which main goal is to piece the heck of it uh, my bad <clears throat> to make your raid experience more complete of course so what are you guys gonna expect from this game well, as with almost everything in life, you gotta be patient, extremely patient. As with Luthia, there's quite a mighty amount of bugs and known glitches, which kinda make it a headache uh, to play sometimes, but I'd say most of us would say those have been worth it. I mean, if we still are here, uh, it, this has gotta be for something. And I actually made two very popular videos about bugs, so I really enjoyed that. You're gonna experience, sadly, several glitches, unfair hybrid fuse amounts, I admittedly, really unfair, uh, sort of things like those you've seen on my popular pain videos, those sort of things that make you wish to throw your device from the tower window in the building. So now we're talking about sanctuaries, what are those? Well basically it's a place to keep your dinos and collect DNA from them, that's basically the main idea, this is used mostly to get more hybrid components and with alliances you can coordinate sanctuaries of one particular hybrid. So for example, imagine you want to unlock Indominus Rex and you happen to have an amazing alliance so what you do is this, you grab a sanctuary and you and your friends start placing from you all, I mean each one of your friends must place creatures, uh, the components needed uh, in order to fuse Indominus Rex. So that would be Epic T-Rex and Common Blast Raptor uh, on that sanctuary. And FIP them. What you may ask, what does FIP mean? FIP is for feed, interact and play with them. It's quite a nice mechanic and you and your love fellas can do whenever you're grinding towards a certain creature. It's very nice. Oh, there's, also, there's also a rule that some alliances have when they're like having very very huge sanctuaries because sanctuaries can level up as creatures are placed and FIP uh, but some alliances have rules about this so you may need to take an eye on your alliances rule according to this particular topic it's quite an inflammatory topic if you are not careful and last but not least we got the rules simply put Try not to use third party apps on the game, like GPS spoofing, which kinda gives an unfair advantage, as you can move through the map without even leaving your home or your place, just by using some GPS app that will help you travel on your map. Keep a positive attitude, avoid again toxic and authoritarian communities, and enjoy your time around, we do very much love to have nice players around, so be nice and treat others as you would want to be treated. That's basically how it is and you're gonna have a rocking amazing fun time uh, playing Jurassic World Alive. That'll wrap it up guys, please do leave a like, subscribe and leave your comment suggestions in case I missed something that you guys didn't. Love you lots. My dudes and your dads. Call on the Mumas. Mumas. Call on the Mumas. Mumas.